Thank you. Thank you, choir. So Reverend Nancy is in Toronto today. Um, I wonder what the degrees is in Toronto this morning. But uh, their long-term pastor is retiring, and so she went to be with them in the congregation to help say goodbye to him on his last Sunday. So we are solo today. So will you pray with me? Oh God, as we come together now in word, I pray that all that is heard by your people, all that is said, and all that is received will bring glory only to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This month we are focusing on our topic of stewardship and being good stewards of all that God has given to us. In the first week, Nancy talked about doing justice and how that is a gift to the world. And today we'll be talking about giving of ourselves by growing spiritually. We don't often think about our own spiritual growth being a gift to the world, but if you think about it, it is one of the best gifts we can give to our family members, to our friends, to our church community. People who are grown up use the gifts that God gave them. And they are also inspiring people to be around. They're joyful people. A familiar question that we often ask children is, what do you want to be when you grow up? And there are those common answers. There's the doctors, the teachers, the pro athletes, the video game designers. That's a new one. One boy said when he grew up, he wanted to be a dog. <laughs> and one mother was surprised that her little girl said that when she grew up, she wanted to be a tattoo artist. <laughs> and she, her reason was, sound logical, you, you get to draw on people and they pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Growing is not really an option. And it can be a slow process. There's a story about a man, after traveling the world, came home and told his gardener he wanted him to plant a particular kind of tree. And the gardener protested, saying, well, that tree is such a slow grower, it will take nearly a century to reach maturity. To which the traveler said, well, in that case, we don't have any time to waste. You better plant it this afternoon. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians. He said, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into Christ who is the head. Sometimes, don't you want to just quote Paul? And when someone gets on your nerve, just say, just grow up, which is probably a sign of my own immaturity to even think that way. In this scripture passage, there are three areas of growth for which we are to be responsible. As good stewards of our lives and as our gift to each other, we are to grow up in Christ. We are to grow in by nurturing our own spiritual development and our own character. And then we are to grow out in unity and in love. So grow up in Christ. It sounds somewhat vague and really nonspecific. And so I looked at images of Scripture to help us to understand what does it mean to grow up in Christ. Well, Paul talks about Jesus being the head of the body, of which we are all members, and that we are to grow together with Christ as our head. The Gospel of John quotes Jesus, who says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. In the book, Secrets of the Vine, written by Bruce Wilkinson, he shares an insight that he learned from a vineyard owner in Southern California. He went on a tour, and on this tour he noticed that the newer branches have a tendency to grow down, and they trail along the ground. And on the ground, those leaves get dirty, covered in dust. And then when it rains, 
the leaves get wet and they get mildewed. And then the branch becomes sick and fruitless. And so Wilkinson asked the vineyard owner, what do you do with those branches? Do you cut them off and throw them away? And the vineyard owner said, oh no, they are much too valuable for that. We go around with a bucket of water and we look for those branches on the ground and we lift them up and we wash them off and then we wrap them around a trellis or we tie them up. And he said, before long, those branches are thriving. To grow spiritually is to understand that Jesus is our true vine. Jesus is our source, and it is God, the vineyard owner, who lifts us up from the weights of the world. It is God who cleanses us and attaches us to others and provides for our spiritual survival. To grow in Christ is to grow in that understanding of this divine human one who walked on this earth. To grow up in Christ is to understand and study who Jesus is. Not just a figure who came and died on the cross and rose again. But knowing Jesus as a mystic, as a healer, as a storyteller, as a teacher, a social prophet, and a founder of a new way. When we grow up in Christ, we learn and study the words of Jesus. And then we too connect with his mission of lifting people up. And we rely upon God to lift us up in the times of our greatest need. Secondly, we also give of ourselves by growing in. We grow in self-awareness. It's been said that one mark of maturity is when our prayer life changes from God give me to God make me. Make me a better person. Make me a better friend, a better spouse, a better church member. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul mentions four specific virtues that are vital for being a grown-up Christian. And I think they're worthy of looking at those four this morning. Humility, gentleness, patience, and love. It is often said that more than half of the trouble that arises in churches is because someone has not been given his or her place, or someone has not been thanked, or someone has felt neglected or not been given a prominent place on a committee or on the platform. And then there's trouble in the church. <laughs> on the contrary, humble people are a gift to the people around them. They are not offended easily. They are slow to anger. Humble people listen without interrupting. They give others the honored seat. They ask for help. They don't insist on having things their own way. Humble people forgive easily, admit their own weaknesses. They say, I am sorry. They are thankful, respectful, and serving others. And then there's this one. Humble people know when to be quiet. <laughs> I think that um, humility is really one of the hardest virtues for us to sustain. Like the guy at work who is given this award, and with the award became a lapel pin that said, most humble person. But then he lost the title because he proudly wore his pen every day to work. <laughs> What a gift it is when we can practice humility. The virtue of gentleness at the root is translated as someone who has every passion under control. 
It really is more than self-control. It's allowing ourselves to be God-controlled. The virtue of patience. Paul uses a Greek word here that means specifically being patient with other people. And sometimes people do try our patience. Amen? And usually they're simply people with limitations. Sometimes it's little children, it's incompetent bosses, it's students who simply cannot learn. It's sometimes bad drivers. Other times people try our patience because simply they are wounded people. People who are troubled. Folks who have been traumatized emotionally or psycho psychologically. People who have chemical imbalances in their brains. Yet we are to be patient. Even when people don't deserve our patience, William Barclay says this, I like this quote, Christian patience is the one that can suffer unpleasant people with graciousness and fools without irritation. <laughs> the virtue of love. And in the Christian sense, this is love beyond affection for someone. It is love in seeing someone as God sees them. It is saying to ourselves, I can be patient with you because I know God's not done with you yet. Just as God is not done with me yet. So our gift as Christians is to grow up. It is to grow in. Into these virtues of humility, gentleness, patience, and love. And what a world, what a country, what a family, what a church would be like if we truly practices, practice these virtues. Thirdly, Paul says we are to grow out. Grow out in unity and in love. You know, I recall one of my very first job interviews in Florida. I was new out of college, and I moved a thousand miles away from Indiana to start my new life. And I was really unsure where it would take me. And I surprisingly landed this dream job interview at a local college. And so I dressed, you know, in my suit, my new gray suit that they told us was appropriate for interviews, a skirt, nylons, <laughs> high heels. <laughs> Those were the days, right? <laughs> And like I was supposed to do, I got there early. I was so early, I was, said, I, I can't go in this early. So I sat in the parking lot in my car. And I decided to pray, to prepare for this interview. And then I pulled out the little Bible that I kept, the little New Testament in my glove compartment. And I opened it up, just randomly opened it. I thought, I'll, I'll read a little before I go in. And miraculously... It landed right on Ephesians 4, chapter 1. I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. It was a miracle. And I felt God speaking to me. And I knew that I was going to get that job. We are not really fully grown up until we grow out by using our gifts to promote unity in Christ. I was convinced, I am convinced today that that job is what prepared me it taught me. I gained so much experience from that job that eventually allowed me to say yes to ministry and to serve the church through all that I learned.
Scripture tells us that God gives all of us gifts. We have the gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, teachers. And I know you have been given gifts. And you've nurtured your gifts, hopefully, over the many years. And when it comes right down to it, all of life is about giving. Life is about growing. And yes, even in retirement, still using your gifts for the betterment of others. The purpose, I think, of our gifts and our growing is unity. Unity through that one vine, the body of Christ. Unity that is maintained by practicing those virtues. And unity by using our God-given gifts to support each other and to love each other. Speaking of growing up, Robert Fulgham wrote in All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, Share Everything, Play Fair, Don't Hit People, Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. And say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. He writes, think what a better world it would be if we all, the whole world, had cookies and milk about 3 o'clock every afternoon and then we lay down with our blankies to take a nap. <laughs> or think what a better world it would be if all the governments had a basic policy to always put things back where they found them and to clean up their own mess. And it is still true, no matter how old you are, he writes, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. As we give together, as we grow together, may God help us. May God help us in our mission to be, stay connected to that true vine, to grow up, to grow in, and to grow out in love and unity. Amen.